About 4 a.m. When you look outside after struggling with an algorithm for 12 hours and finally realize you'd accomplish more by going to bed. Let's talk about why software engineers get high salaries. Well, it's hard, in high demand. And, quite frankly, the companies also have a lot of money to throw around. Software engineering is freaking hard. Now, I'm not talking about your random bozo who knows how to write in HTML and Java as his entire skill set. I'm talking about true software engineers. These are problem solvers who know how to think in algorithms, can easily perform an intuitive runtime analysis to pick an approach, can adapt and have actually implemented a lot of complicated algorithms in courses, and actually know what an operating system is and does, understands computer architecture to understand the limits and possibilities of code, and even understands higher-level programming. In this day and age, Almost any random kid can whip up a poker game in Java in a couple of hours. But it's actually hard to find someone who's a true problem solver, instead of a coding monkey. There is a notable difference between the median and mean salary. This is because the top and pure problem solvers, the rare kind get a high salary while people who are hired as coding monkeys make almost minimum wage. I'm assuming you wanted a more helpful how. Maybe you don't have the money to apply to universities, or you don't think it's worth your time to go back. Well, for starters, you have to prove that you're a problem solver. If your GitHub profile is full of bullshit projects like a text poker game or tic-tac-toe, you will only get hired as a coding monkey. If you want to truly impress a recruiter as a problem solver, do solo projects based on complicated algorithms, operating systems, or computer architecture. For each of these projects, write a small blog about it. Mastery of said topics indicates a much deeper and richer understanding of computers and coding in general. That will place you into the small club of real software engineers. In fact, most good software engineers are vastly underpaid for the value they add or create to a company. That's actually true for the top 10% of people in any field. They're not paid nearly enough when it comes to the value they create. For software engineers specifically, there are some stragglers who cost the company money and don't add enough value. It happens. Software engineers have the ability to help you primarily in two main, tangible ways. They can help you make more money or they help you save more money. How? They can build software, automate tasks, optimize infrastructure, lead teams, offer areas of expertise, etc. I've seen engineers walk into a company, make a few suggestions that save the company $400,000 in annual expenses, and walk out in a single day. Now, are they going to do this every day? Probably not but the value they add is real. The flip side of this is you hire a senior engineer. Let's say $450,000 annually all in costs, who help you write software and features that your customers want and this adds $80,000 to your bottom line on a monthly basis. Great, you just made a profit of $510,000. I'd quickly point out a few of the negatives of the IT industry. With just one year of experience, I really have understood a lot. My observations. 1. Your career ends at 45 years of age in most cases but there are exceptions. 2. They hire you for different technology and put you into an entirely different technology. 3. Low pay. They charge the clients four times what we're paid. I know that the average pay is much higher than other industries in most cases, but it's low considering what salary we're actually charged. 4. If you're a fresher and do something outstanding there's always a senior to take all the credits. 5. No respect. Whichever level you reach there's someone above you who'd be there to disregard and disrespect you because you haven't done it their way or within the provided time limit. 6. They fire employees giving absurd reasons. Believe it or not, there is a fixed percentage of people every cycle who need to be fired from the company, no matter how good they have been. A girl was put into PIP though she used to work efficiently but used to leave early sometimes because of the distance of her home from the office. 7. You don't have a life. You constantly think about switching and earning more along with the pressure of losing the job in case your current technology becomes redundant. Getting a job in it is extremely easy for above average people, and not that tough for average or below average people too since most of the time only communication skills are tested as a fresher and you can earn a lot of money after four, five years of experience and by switching to different companies. But what you can never gain are satisfaction and respect. 